what if I told you that there was a game with an engaging storyline, complex characters, deep combat system, beautiful music, and amazing designs? What if I told you that the game that offers all of these qualities is free? And the game that promises all of this? Arknights. That's the premise and the qualities that the game offers to you. So with all that being said, how can I convince you that this game is bad? That's just it, I won't. This isn't a cynical hit piece on Arknights or a negative review about the game as a whole because Arknights isn't objectively a bad game, especially when compared to newer games releasing now. This is, however, a review on the negatives, a review about the game as a whole. You could watch another review to learn about why this game is great. But Arknights doesn't need another claim that it's the best gacha game ever made, a perfect or another piece about why it's better than another different gacha game. What Arknights needs is a spotlight shown onto the mistakes this game has made and the mistakes it continuously chooses to make, as efforts and focus are placed into alternative creations like Enfield and the anime that's currently in development. Is Arknights a good game? Yes. It's the greatest? No. That title can't be given to a gacha game that still hasn't mastered the new player experience. But let's start with what you need to know about difficulty, because it's arguably one of the most important factors to Arknights. The AI on the surface is simple, it's easy to understand with rules that are explained to you early on. Those rules teach you about deployment order and targeting priority. This in theory can work for you and against you. If you know how to use the AI properly and how it works, you can manipulate and plan accordingly. However, because the AI is so simple, there are many ways the game uses your knowledge against you. Here are just some of the ways the game undermines your pre-existing knowledge. Enemies can appear to have a straight path that the game tells you when they first spawn in, but they have an unidentifiable range, meaning they can attack you from a distance. Along that path, despite you knowing where they will go, many ranged units will sit in one location before moving and fire at your squad from a distance before continuing onwards. Invisible units will attack your squad and can only be exposed by certain structures or specific units. You subsequently also have unblockable units, meaning that you do need to target them first and foremost to stop them from getting you through your defenses. These are just some of the ways that the game tries to undermine your knowledge and the unintended consequence of this is getting you to second guess yourself or sometimes disregard your knowledge completely. If you know your enemy then you should know how to deal with them, but on maps with limited placement options, deploying too early can be a death sentence. Deploy too late and you might not have enough DP to get your team out in time. The game gives you knowledge, tells you that it's integral to operations, and then forgoes that instead in the name of difficulty, rendering your information only useful under specific circumstances. Before beginning a mission, you can look at enemies present in the operation, but you are unable to see their attack range, leaving you to guess, which in turn may lead to you simply restarting the operation if you realized your mistake too early on. But what is a mistake? What causes a failure? Arknights defines failure in many different terms and levels, but by most it's considered a leak when even one enemy makes it through your defensive line. The consequences of leaks are vast. Even if you finish the stage altogether and only allow one enemy through, you can't use auto deploy to farm it again, locking you out of potential resources. You don't get Originite Prime, which is the primary currency used to either purchase skins, buy items from the shop, or convert into pulls. This subsequently means that for every minor mistake, for every singular leak, a restart is almost required. Otherwise, there's no point in finishing since you'll have to return either way. This also incentivizes pushing your units beyond what is the requirement for the stage, as getting and cutting a stage extremely close means that your auto deploy may not be safe or stable. Repeated restarts pull you out of the immersion the game so desperately tries to build up. Every restart removes tension from the ongoing situation. Not to mention that any tension the situations may have inherently could potentially be removed if you built your units beyond at that point of requirements, to an extent to where they could pretty easily clear the content. In Arknights, you're either just barely capable of doing a stage, or you can completely stomp it. And whilst there is the condition wherein you can't do the stage at all, most individuals will be more inclined to level up your units and do another stage beforehand just to farm materials until you can clear it easily. Because by most, auto deploy is the main point of clearing a stage. You want to push further and you want to get access to materials, but you also want to be able to auto deploy that stage. And the easiest way to do that is to ensure your units are above the prerequisite requirements for that stage itself. But what about the story? Arknet has one, right? Well, the story of Arknet is dark, gloomy, oftentimes referred to as depressing. However, that story never gets the opportunity to fully flesh itself out due to how progression works. As I mentioned before, the tension that builds up has a chance of being abruptly cut by the sanity system, preventing the game from fully going that extra mile. The issue is that because the game doesn't separate its story from its missions, you're required to essentially do both at the same time. Whilst you can rewatch story missions altogether, it doesn't necessarily have the same ebb and flow as a story that's full on complete or one that is meant to be sequenced through and through because your combat may not equal what's happening in the story. The units you choose to have and deploy on your team may not be introduced until much later on, rendering the scene a bit awkward to you. Arknights, unlike multiple other gacha games, chooses to tie its story directly to your progression on an individual level as opposed to a chapter level or an episodic mode. Not to mention that each individual character comes with their own set backstories and events sometimes. 
However, the difficulty is Arcanite has a text file which tells you that backstory, meaning that it is less impactful when you don't get any unique art, when you don't get any expression, and when you don't necessarily see or interact with that character on an individual basis. The text file serves as a record of events, whether it's the backstory of the character, occasionally mentioning or hinting at different relationships, or potentially new events. The issue is, because the text file is written as a factual statement, it is occasionally written in terms of an observation by other individuals. The problem with this is because you yourself are never directly involved with any of these events, they fall flat in some circumstances. Because you don't directly interact with these characters outside of missions, you haven't built a bond with them. Despite the trust rank increasing, you've never had a one-on-one -on -one interaction. So it means that while you may know the backstory of a character, the personality isn't something you've experienced and only something you can grasp from concept. The events themselves are large, they're impactful, but the desire to pay attention is overshadowed by the desire of new players who are only attempting to get characters who's featured as a reward for certain stages. This incentivizes the concept of building up your characters or specifically building up units that are extremely good for this one situation. Whilst I'm aware there are certain prerequisites, an example some individuals like to use is that you shouldn't be able to collect the unit if you haven't met them in story, or in the event story itself. That is a fair point. The counter observation to that is you're capable of doing this in the main storyline. You can recruit every single character in the game from the beginning. Even if you do not choose to use the beginner's banner, you can still get units that are from later on in the game. Even if you do use the beginner's banner, you can subsequently get units who you're supposed to meet later on in different chapters. The concept of being required to meet a unit in the story doesn't make sense when you can do that regardless. I don't believe the story should be the limitation or the stage should be the limitation for getting that unit when participation in the event doesn't necessarily precede that. By this I mean, you can clear the first stage of every event over and over again and you can repeatedly utilize your entire sanity position and all the sanity potion that you have to clear one stage over and over and to eventually clear out the shop. And potentially at that point you could purchase pot 6 of the unit you do not have yet. Previously in my Arcanites video, or the video that glossed over Arcanites and ranted about every other game, I mentioned that Arcanites should instead implement a system in that if you purchase the potential for a unit you don't have from an event, you receive that unit instead, and later on when you meet them in the store and you get that copy of them, it will simply be a potential instead. This means that regardless, whether you're clearing out the stages individually or you're only clearing out the first stage, you still have the opportunity to get that unit itself. And this incentivizes newer players to get involved in the story as opposed to understand that they may have to skip out on an event storyline or an event entirely because they are unable to clear the stages that are currently present. If individuals want Arknight's story to be more focused on and more well known, they need to also understand that many new players are forced to miss out on that story or may not care about it because, in a lot of case scenarios, many people won't be willing to go back and reread the first stage's story. While we are on the topic of new units, let's discuss the topic of limited banners. They entice new players to pull, only to then realize just how impactful that decision can be when looking at a worst case scenario or the sparse nature of reruns themselves. This subsequently means that a unit may individually be on the standard banner rated up, like Surtur for example. Or Thorns. An individual may want them and subsequently be willing to utilize that first 10 pull on that banner. But if you're dealing with the limited banner at the same time, it is arguably much more beneficial for you to go for the characters on that limited banner. At least if you can get the limited one you want. The issue is, if you're going for one that is off rate up or in a limited banner, an example being the Spectre, the Unchained, and Irene banner. In that instance, you could also be going for the Scotty, the Corrupting Heart. And if you're unlucky, that could be 300 pulls you have to do for any of the limited banner units. And for a lot of individuals, that just simply isn't something they seem to realize early on. Sure, you can get lucky, and sure, there is a theoretical pity system. The problem is, it's not necessarily a guarantee. Someone could repeatedly get an Irene without ever getting a Spectre. Someone could get both of them without getting a Scotty. And if that's the case, that means they then have to buy them from the shop. Meaning that for a vast majority of individuals, if you want the most powerful units, it's better off just to save and save and save and then eventually go in on a limited banner for a really powerful unit. Strictly because any of the standard banner units can be picked up at any time throughout your pulls. On a foundational level, Arcanet has a really good track record, it's consistent, it has a good story, it has good designs. But small instances, auto deploy not working right for a lot of individuals. Annihilation tickets only just recently being introduced when they should have been introduced ages ago. No ability to repeatedly tell the game to farm a stage for you when instead you individually have to click on it one by one. These small issues pile up and instead take a great game down to a good game. And for a lot of new individuals, if you played other gacha games and you're used to the systems they have, getting into Arcanites may feel a bit more tedious. A tedious game isn't a fun game, a tedious game isn't a good game. Poorly explained systems are not the same thing as a difficult system. 
I do like Arcanites. I like the game. I like the characters. I pull for the units I want. But if I'm speaking from my own personal experience, the fact that I have to repeatedly farm a stage individually one by one by one, as opposed to selling the game to utilize a set amount of sanity or repeatedly farm a stage, say six times, makes the game experience far more tedious because the vast majority of the time, I'm just watching the exact same thing happen on screen. I do believe Arcanite is still a great game. I do believe individuals love it and have a reason to. Without going in depth into the community, the community itself is knowledgeable. I've mentioned this numerous times. I just believe that Arcanite itself has issues it needs to fix. At the end of the day, every gacha game and every player is different. You may prefer a different game than I do. You may prefer a different style of storytelling than I do. And all of these are perfectly valid. I don't think it's fair to reject anyone's opinions. Regardless of whether or not you agree with them, I don't think it's fair to just say someone's negative because they can be. Criticism is important to everybody, not only to content creators, but also to people, also to games, movies, studios, everyone. And rejecting criticism only serves to allow a product to stagnate as opposed to improve. And I do think and hope Arknights improves. If you're a long time player, I want you to leave in the comment section below what are your issues with the game, if you have any, what are something you wish they could be doing differently. And if you're an individual who watches the anime and is wondering why I didn't discuss it in this video, it's because I'm discussing the game. I don't believe the anime counts. Whilst well, I know the anime correlates to the game and could theoretically explain different aspects of it, I want to explain it for individuals who would theoretically just be getting into the game itself. If the anime isn't of interest to you, then the anime isn't of interest to you and shouldn't be required to explain and understand certain concepts. If you would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member. We don't have any as of yet and I would like to flesh that out more. And either way, consider subscribing and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.